Hi. Now, I often get requests for answering questions from various people, and here is just one of many that I get. Asked to differentiate, find dy by dx, differentiate this with respect to x. Now we've got y equals x minus 5 to the half all over x. So, how do we do this? Well, first of all, I notice that we've got two functions of x being divided by one another. So, what we need to use is the quotient rule. And just to remind you, if you're not familiar with the quotient rule, we often quote it as if y equals u over v, where u and v are functions of x. And in this case, u would be x minus 5 to the half, and v would be the x. Then it can be shown that dy by dx is equal to the bottom of the fraction, v, multiplied by the differential of the top of the fraction, that's du dx, minus the top of the fraction, u, times the differential with respect to x at the bottom of the fraction, that's dv dx, all divided by the bottom of the fraction squared. So this is called the quotient rule, and we're going to have to use that. OK, let's start then by differentiating this according to the quotient rule. So therefore, what we have is that dy by dx is going to equal, well, it's the bottom of the fraction times the differential of the top of the fraction. So the bottom of the fraction is x. Now we need to times by the differential of the top of the fraction. So x minus 5 to the power half, how do we do that? Well, we have to use something called the chain rule. And I'll show you how that works. Essentially, if we were to say that y equals x minus 5 to the power half, if we were given this to differentiate normally, then I would call the middle part here t say. So I would have that t equals x minus 5. Okay? So what does that mean? It means that y would have equaled t to the power half. And by using the chain rule, the chain rule is essentially that dy by dx is equal to dy by d anything times the same d anything by dx. But what is that d anything? Well, in this case, it's going to be dt. It's as if these cancel. So what is dy by dt? dy by dt is going to be a half t to the minus a half. Half t to the minus a half. And dt dx is going to be simply 1, if you were to differentiate that. And if we now substitute for t, t being x minus 5, you've got a half x minus 5 to the power minus a half times the 1. Well, you should be able to do this straight off with practice rather than going through this, but I've only done this just to remind you how the chain rule works. So, if we were doing this question, again, going back to differentiating by the quotient rule, we'd have the bottom, v, times the differential of the top of the fraction. Well, we've just done that here, and that would be then a half multiplied by x minus 5 to the minus a half. All right. And as I say, you should be able to do this straight off, really. Then we've got the minus here. And now it is the top of the fraction. So the top of the fraction is x minus 5 to the power half, being multiplied by the differential of the bottom of the fraction. But if you differentiate x with respect to x, you get 1. And then this is all divided by all divided by the denominator squared, so that's x squared. Now whenever I get something like this, always tidy up. We've got two terms on the top, and we need to tidy up each term. So when it comes to this term here, we've got a negative power, minus a half, so that's going to be the same as 1 over x minus 5 to the power half. Times it with the half, that becomes 1 over 2, bracket x minus 5 to the half, 
times it with the x, and then what you end up with is x all over 2 bracket x minus 5 to the power half. So that's that first term tidied up. This term tidied up, well, times in by 1, we can just write this then as x minus 5 to the half. So we've got minus x minus 5 to the power half. And all of this is divided by x squared. Now, when you get something like this, we need to tidy this up. I tend to call it a stacked fraction because it takes up three levels. What I need to do is get rid of this part here. And what I would encourage you to do is to multiply top and bottom by whatever you have in the denominator here. And in this case, I'm going to multiply top and bottom of this fraction by 2x minus 5 to the half over 2 times x minus 5 to the half. We can do this because this comes to 1. Multiplying a fraction by 1 doesn't change its value. What it will do is change the appearance, however. It will greatly simplify this. So, we've got two terms on the top. We need to multiply each term then by 2x minus 5 to the half. And if we times the first term by that, what we're going to get is just simply x, because this will cancel out with the green 2x minus 5 to the half. Now we go on to the second term, multiply it by 2x minus 5 to the half, and we would have minus 2 bracket x minus 5 to the power 1, or just simply x minus 5. And then this will all be divided by x squared times this 2x minus 5 to the half. I'll put the 2 at the front of the x squared, so we have 2x squared, and then x minus 5 to the half. What I need to do now is just expand this bracket, and we get x minus 2x plus 10, and that is now divided by 2x squared times x minus 5 to the half. And I can simplify the top line here, x minus 2x is minus x, but I'm going to write the 10 first of all, because it's a positive term, so 10 minus x, all divided by, you can't multiply out the bottom, so that's 2x squared. You can either write x minus 5 to the half, or you can rewrite that as a square root, the square root then of x minus 5. Okay, well I hope uh, that's easy to follow, and uh, there you go.